the Akashic attacked us out of the blue. And there's no telling when they might be back. You'd best keep that sword handy, Sid. Let me go with you. I can fight. You can get back inside and bolt the door, is what you can do. Fiends try to climb the walls here, too. Founder knows where they're gonna show their ugly faces next. Thanks to the Akashic, all of the men are either on watch, readying for the next attack, or confined to their sick beds. All while my bed remains as cold and as empty as those demons' hearts. Sharp as razors, my blades are. But those Akashic bastards just shrug off every blow. Mad dogs, the lot of them. My... my brothers... are, are they... Shh, don't try to talk. And you, Clive. Jill? Otto said he'd been attacked by Akashic. What exactly happened here? Those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you've come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. They were too if they fast. Do you think there were as many or as Martha says? Too slow. <laughs> More. And that's all that if matters. they ain't clawing at the gates, they're climbing up the cliffs near the lift. The lads are doing what they can to keep them out, but unlike the Akashic, they need sleep. I can't take much more of this. You don't think they've abandoned us, do you? Them not. Not a chance. Ugh. The barricades we've set up around the town won't hold the Akashic back for long. Might buy us a few moments to say our last farewells, though. Wounded. We deal with the Akashic first. You're finished. 
These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you've come to rob this place... You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Martha's leave. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my Lord. There wasn't time for introductions. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wadesmen? But how did you come to be here? Where is your commander? Sir Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after. We'll join you anon. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Mother! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all! We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. The lift can only carry a few at a time. If those Akashic get as far as the cliff, Wade's men will have nowhere to run. It looked like the Guardians were going as quick as they could, but without any injured. They might make it to the cliff, or they might not. My... my brothers. Mad dogs, the love. I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir... Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it... We thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? Behind you! Damn it! We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty. Now, Torvald! Now, Torvald! 
Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down Eastpool Way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde. Feel like finishing the job? Always. Jill and I will make for East Pool. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck. After it! <laughs> Eastpool's seen enough tragedy. A visit from a horde of glassy-eyed ghouls just adds insult to injury. Please, make for Eastpool. I'll join you as soon as I can. for the rest. We have to slow them down. Martha and the others won't be ready. Now, 
Something's coming. Apologies, my lord. Did I miss anything? Only the first round, so wait. Shall we? Do you see any more? No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha's while we can. What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Scores of Akashic. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? A oh, damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back. But when? And whether that's sooner or later, we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that... Of course they can stay. My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. Murdoch? I... I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother... My father did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. <clears throat> well, go on, then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, Sir Wade. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar, but I'm a shield no longer. Nor was I ever the finest. 
And spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one uh, aspiring to take his oaths. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy she... N n not that Sir Wade and the other Guardians are... I mean to say that, uh, the... It's all right. We know what you mean. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire... Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. And I'm certain Sir Rodney would approve. <sighs> know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way! I will not let you down, Lord Rossfield. You, or my uncle. We shall be staying here for the time being, and not just for the ale. I'll have one of my men escort Oscar to Benemir once he's said his farewells. Fate seemed I'll bent on driving me from my inn. I'll have any man who if they want me out, I'm going to have to try me. harder. If you could, I'd be in your debt. Bastards. It's as if life hadn't been hard enough round here since the fang fell. Poor bastard. Couldn't run because of the weight of his load. Still, better a branded than one of us. you're wondering why Dalamil's in such a sorry state, you can blame the bandits, them and the mercenaries who are guarding the gates. Though I can hardly fault them for running. Fighting would have meant death. Did for more than a few. My shop? Why would anyone do such a thing? If I had my pickaxe, I would have... Don't get yourself worked up. You need rest. What are we to do? We could fight, but what would it cost us? Pieces. All that hard work. Gone. What's the Brandon doing all on his own? Has he lost his master? Here you are. I thought I told you to go and hide in the inn. I tried, but they were everywhere. I was so scared. Damn it all! Why did Kupka have to go and get himself killed? He was the only thing standing between us and this! Fuck! How the hell did they find it? No one knew where I was keeping that kill. So much for the men of the rock. 
The cowards took to the hills as soon as they saw the mob coming. We saw it all from upstairs. The bandits came and started attacking everyone. It was really scary. Lower than beasts they are. Aye, the scum of the twins. Sid, your new companion appears much more formidable than your uncle. Should I be worried? Ah, you haven't been introduced. Jill, Clive has told me much about you. All lies, I'm sure. Your Stolas said that Dalamil has a bandit problem. Indeed. Although you're a little late. They left with our food and gill days ago. Any idea where they went? The desert's a big place. Your guess is as good as mine. But the fact is, I have more immediate concerns. What did you say to me? What did you say? Ah, as if by magic. Let's just say we've... Yet to reach a consensus about how to solve Dalimil's little problem. And at this rate, it won't be the actions of the bandits which prove to be our undoing. It will be our own. Now, I've tried reasoning with the dissenting parties, but even the desert hare has limits. Perhaps we could talk to them. What makes you think they'll listen to us? What makes you think they won't? Hm. She makes a fair point, Sid. And you won't have wasted much of your precious time if you fail. They're just across the courtyard. Suppose we just follow the shouting. They're both as stubborn as the lover's pox and every bit as irritating. The more one insists on their proposed plan of action, the more the other rails against it. Oh, they've successfully split the town asunder just when we should be standing as one. And it heal your hurts. They've taken everything from me. Everything. I want them dead. <laughs> Fucking leaving. You wouldn't talk like that if it had been your men whose throats were slit. Blood for blood, it's the only way. We hire mercenaries and have them mount the bandits' heads on our walls as a lesson to the rest. And what happens when those mercenaries are slaughtered like your men? Are you going to hire more? We're better off using that coin to buy food and supplies. If we hire mercenaries, the only thing we're buying is the bandits' ire. And you cannot fill empty bellies with that. Do you hear me? But what happens when they come back? Maybe it'll be your throat that's slit. That's enough. Both of you. Any more of this and I'll throw you out myself. Come back when you're ready to talk like adults. Victor. What's he doing here? Sid. And Lady Jill. What brings you here? 
I was about to ask you the same thing. Costness is in chaos. And the markets have all but ceased to operate. The Briar's Kiss here in Dalamil is the only place I can reliably obtain supplies. I was here to do just that when Master Lubor told me of his troubles. He thought I might be able to talk some sense into these fools. But if you're here, I suppose his patience must be waning. Who are those people? Those were the thorns in Lubor's side. And the reason this place might be headed the same way as Kostnes. It's these accursed skies. The darkness is enough to drive a man to madness. Or an entire city, for that matter. We're still working on the skies. But in the meantime, perhaps we can find a solution to Dalamil's problems. I hope so. For all our sakes. Haven't we had enough fighting? I know I bloody well have. The next time those two go for each other's throats, I'm barring them both. So, you see my predicament? What I saw was a room full of people who were angry and afraid. And with good reason by the sound of it. But if left to smolder, that anger and fear could set the entire town alight. My thoughts exactly. Ah, uh, what to do? Both sides wish to protect their homes and livelihoods, if only they could agree on how. But as long as they are divided, we are vulnerable. And if there's one thing bandits like, it's an easy target. What would Sid the Outlaw suggest? Well, if it were my namesake... He'd let them choose for themselves, and be on hand to pick up the pieces when it all went wrong. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. <sighs> A recipe for disaster is precisely what it is. But perhaps that realization would be enough to make them question the ingredients. While it's plain neither Conrad nor Natalie will countenance the other's proposal, it may still be possible to make them doubt their own. Before presenting them with a third option. And that would be? To pool our resources and save the city ourselves. Why fight each other? When all that fear and anger can be directed at the bandits. It appears we have a plan of action. Victor, pay Conrad a visit. See if you can't convince him of his folly. I'll speak with Natalie. As you wish. Hmm. Your faces are not well known in this town. That may prove useful. Don't worry, Victor and I will do most of the talking. You need only play along. Play along? What he means to say is yes. Picture it, Conrad. Your own city guard. ...with you as captain. Me? Ah! Here she is! The Lady of the Spear herself. Conrad. May I introduce you to Jane? Commander of the Red Wings. The oldest mercenary guild in the Free Cities. A pleasure, my lady. The... Pleasure is all mine. As I told you, I summoned the commander here from Canva to inquire about a contract. Victor says you told him no. That there aren't any men left to hire. Is that true? True as the crystals cracked. Nobles came and claimed every last one worth his salt. And not just from us Red Wings. You know of the seven high houses. 
There must be two score swords assigned each one. Granted, we have a few boys left. If it's boys you're looking for. Well, Conrad? Are you saying that Dalham's finest cannot defend this town better than a gaggle of unblooded striplings? That a band of beardless youths could better avenge the deaths of your brave men than you yourselves? Absolutely not. We'll show those bastards who they're dealing with. I can't believe that actually worked. Conrad's not what you call the brightest candle in the crypt. And there's a reason why I had you do the talking and not Sid. Well played, my lady. I wonder if Conrad has the right of it. We always called on swords and the Men of the Rock to guard our gates before. We don't have enough blades to arm everyone, nor enough physicus to heal the injured. I don't know if we can do this alone. Next thing you know, Natalie would be offering the bandits bed and board. Then let us band together and show these brutes that done it. Oh, I'm ruined. Mummy, I'm scared. I mean, it may still be possible to buy something, and we may yet be allowed to keep it. Yes, but... <sighs> ah, here he is now. Natalie, allow me to introduce Lord Underhill of Randalar's prestigious League of Merchants. Uh, Lord Underhill, at your service. Underhill? I was just telling the good lady of our conversation, my lord, and how you were lamenting the state of the capital's stores. Lubor says that not only are the granaries almost empty, but that war and the blight mean this season's harvest won't be enough to fill them for winter. Indeed, certainly that is the case. The nobles in the capital are buying up the city's stocks of barley and wine driving the prices higher than most commoners can afford. It is only a matter of time before the peasants revolt. <clears throat> it is worse than I thought. If what Lord Underhill says is true, I fear we have little hope of supplementing our stores, meager though they regrettably are. And while I applaud your endeavors to dissuade our more bellicose citizens from seeking vengeance, I sense Conrad is not wrong in his assessment of the bandit's likely return. Which means that now, more than ever, we will need to secure what little we still have. Food, weapons, herbs, everything. If our humble town is to endure not only this hardship, but those that are certain to follow, we must stand united. All right. If it will help to protect my home, I'll do it. But you needn't have gone through this charade. Thank you, Clive. Your performance was nothing if not workmanlike. She saw right through it. I didn't say it was good. Merely that it produced the desired effect. Now, my scouts should be returning shortly. Meet me back at the Briar's Kiss, and we shall see what we face. I'm not convinced our roles in this ruse were entirely necessary. I don't know. Conrad seemed quite taken with you. Unnecessary blood spilt. We need a plan. There's truly no chance for us to restock our supplies. That's it, then. We shall have to do this the hard way. My shop! Good news, Sid. 
Both Conrad and Natalie have somewhat gracefully accepted their new roles. With time, they may even learn to. Time no longer appears to be the luxury it was before lunch. I take it your scouts found the bandits. Technically, it would be the bandits who found my scouts. It appears they march for Dalamil as we speak. All of them. You're not serious. They don't just want food, they want the whole damn town. I have a favor to ask. I'm told the bandits march in two groups, one from the south and one from the desert, in a move doubtless intended to stretch our already gossamer-thin defenses. Very well. Jill and I will meet those from the desert. But what of the rest? The rest, my friend, the city shall fight. Together. Mistakes, I concede, are high. But if this does not unite Dalamil, nothing will. That is a lot of faith to put into those who had their hands around each other's throats but a moment ago. Then it will be for us to see that their hands are kept occupied. And I do mean us. I thought you might say that. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. And we will do the same. <laughs> the women folk have come to welcome us. I'll take that one. It's all yours. <laughs> They mean to overwhelm us. The townspeople. Could they have held out? I don't hear any fighting. What do you think? That we should hurry. Natalie, I owe you an apology. You did well out there. The inn would have been lost had you not held the line. 
Without you, there would have been no line to hold. You saved us, Conrad. You saved Alamil. We all saved Alamil. Conrad seems to have had a change of heart. I'd say they both have. I take it from your presence that our visitors from the desert won't be joining us either. Pity. The plan worked, Sid. Granted, it only took an army of bloodthirsty bandits at our gate. Calm now, Victor. Why quibble over the details? We are united, and that is all that matters. As for you, Sid, you fight considerably better than you act. I'll take that as a compliment. seem to have things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind at rest. <laughs> now, if I could only convince the people of Kostnus to work together. Dalimil will forever be in your debt. But don't go trying to take advantage of that. So, where did you learn to swing a sword like that? In a desert full of ne'er-do-wells, a woman has to learn to look after herself.